Hello. This is Edith Neumeyer. How are you doing? Today I want to talk about 1 Thessalonians 5. I talked to my sister today, and of course, who lives in Germany, and she was telling me that the Germans are going on the streets demonstrating about peace. They're afraid that the Russians will invade Germany or Europe. And so they're demonstrating tons and tons of people. Nobody could go on the streets for this false whatever I cannot say. Okay? It starts with a P. Yeah, they couldn't go on the streets for that. Well, they did. Some do. Some did. But right now, oh my goodness. It looks like almost all of Germany is going on the streets and they're all screaming, guess what? What do you think they're screaming? Peace, 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 peace. Well, that reminded me of something that the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5. Do you remember that verse in 1 Thessalonians 5? Many people have told me lately, and they have reminded me, or not reminded me, but they were saying, well, you know what? Jesus cannot come or return or the rapture cannot happen until they say peace and safety. And I keep asking them, well, where in the world do you read that? Because I want to understand. Because, you know, some people think, oh, this Antichrist have to make a peace treaty with um, Israel first. And so that's why I think, oh, peace, peace, peace treaty. If they're not saying peace and safety or if there's not peace and safety, um, you know, uh, Jesus is not returning. So somebody told me, hey, there is this verse in First Thessalonians 5 where that is said as well. Okay, because the first one with the peace treaty with Israel is not biblical, right? That is wrong. That belongs to the 70 years of Daniel, 70 uh, yeah, years of Daniel, and those were, are fulfilled. There's not going to be coming out a, 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 a peace treaty from those 70 years. That, that is not a peace treaty. That is simply a covenant, a new covenant that Jesus already made with Israel. No, here we are talking about something totally different. And that's what I want to look at today. Because, yeah, I can believe that that's the truth. But it has nothing to do with a peace treaty. It has something to do with people saying peace. And safety. Let's look at that. Okay, it's in verse 3, and I'm going to read it first. While people are saying, okay, that's what it is. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Interesting, right? Yes. So when will that happen? Well, that will happen when? When the day of the Lord starts. Now, we know in 1 Thessalonians 4, and you can read that, Paul describes Jesus returning for the bride. Okay? Now, a lot of people, they uh, refuse to believe in what some people call the rapture, which is not in the Bible. Yes, I know that word is not in the Bible. But people use that event and call it rapture. Okay? Now, that event is in the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4. When Jesus returns for his bride. Read it. I'm not going there right now. You can do that yourself. Okay? If you're not familiar with that section. But then he says in chapter 5, Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and the dates 
We do not need to write to you. What is he talking about? That event when Jesus returns for his bride. Right? For you know very well that the day of the Lord. Okay? So there's a correlation between the day of the Lord and Jesus coming for the bride. And it looks here also that it will at the beginning of the day of the Lord. It says, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. That means the day of the Lord, the beginning of the day of the Lord is like the, a thief in the night. The day of the Lord is a thousand years. It's not one day. Okay, we know that from 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3 tells us about the day of the Lord, that it is a thousand years. One day for God is like a thousand years. And we're talking about the day of the Lord. So one day with the Lord is like a thousand years. So we know that too. So it comes, that day of the Lord comes, that is the beginning, and at the end, we have a thousand years passing, right? But we know that this day of the Lord starts like a thief in the night. Now, this phrase, thief in the night, people, has two meanings. Number one, thief in the night could mean surprisingly, right? A thief in the night reminds us of a surprise kind of attack. And we can think that that's what it means too, right here. So the thief of the night is uh, surprising us. But again, in four, he says, no, the thief, this, this event does not surprise us. In four, it says, but you brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that the day should surprise you like a thief. Okay? So not us, not the believers, but the unbelievers will be surprised. Okay? Another uh, symbolic meaning for the thief in the night, it stands for symbolically for one feast of the Lord. And do you have any idea which feast? If you have followed my videos, you know. The Feast of Trumpets. That uh, feast is the only feast, the seven feasts of the Lord, that's, that happens on a new moon. And that's why that feast was called It's Coming Like a Thief in the Night. Because nobody knew when the, full, the new moon would start. They had to watch and not be surprised by the new moon. And that's why it's called like a thief, or that feast comes like a thief in the night. So we also know that the day of the Lord starts on that feast. And that's one of the feasts that's not fulfilled um, in the fall. The first four feasts of the Lord are fulfilled. So the next one that needs to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets. And that is when the day of the Lord starts. He pinpoints that exactly. It's not only going to be surprising for the unbelievers, but it also gives a hint to the believers actually when that day starts. Now, we don't know what year. Okay? Okay. We don't know what year. We also don't know exactly on what day the bride is being picked up. We hear from Paul that it's the last trump. There's 100 trumps on that feast, right? So on the last trump of that feast is when Jesus picks up his bride. So we know quite a lot of information. We are not in the darkness what he says here. But you brothers and sisters are not in the darkness, right? We know a lot of information. So, but for me, this saying, oh, peace and safety is more information yet. 
So when there is a time when they scream, when they say peace and safety, their destruction will come. Now, what destruction are they talking about? They're talking about the, the, the wrath of God. Because the first thing that happens when the day of the Lord starts is the wrath of God. That's the very first thing. So that's the destruction. We see this in a little bit. We will continue to read and we'll get to that point. But well, we're seeing that this is what uh, um, Paul was talking about. So when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come and they will not escape. So now this screaming for peace and safety in Germany, maybe in Europe, reminded me of this verse. And because a lot of people have been talking about it, they've been saying, wait a minute, we don't have peace and safety yet. It doesn't say that there's peace and safety. It's just saying that people say, say it, scream for it. Okay? Doesn't mean there's going to be peace and safety. But people are screaming peace and safety. And so how does this fit together with everything else? Well, you know what? Sometimes I also pull information, worldly information, into this whole thing. Because here I have a lot of information, but there's people called seers that supposedly have the gift of seeing in the future, okay? They have this gift. I don't know where they get the gift from. Now, some people who have the gift like of prophecy, they get it from God. I don't think that these people are godly seers. Some of them are, some of them are not. Some that just see it in something in the future. Do they get it from false, um, fallen angels? I don't know, okay? I do not know. But they seem to have the gift of seeing what's happening in the future. There's also something called review, I mean, remote viewing that the military did where they had actually gifted people that saw in the future the things that may happen. That's also something where people can see remote viewing it's also where people have the gift of seeing what is happening in the future. And one of these people that I have mentioned before is Elmaya. And this Elmaya actually did say that the Russians will make it all the way to the Rhine River. And that's why I think there is a very close connection with this whole thing. And I talked in my previous video, actually the one I put on YouTube about that subject. So there is one video right now on YouTube that I could not put on, um, on YouTube. Oh, I mean, it's on BitChute and I couldn't put it on YouTube. So go to there and watch it so you get the full information. I'll give you some information here too. So this Ilmaya, that's what he said. He said a lot of, ver and you can look him up. He is on the internet. I mean, he's, he's not, but people have written about him on the internet and um, his predictions. And that's what one of his predictions was about Russia. He says there will be people going on the street. There will be an e economic collapse. Um, there will be a lot of foreigners coming in the country, which all happened already. There will be a, a moral decline, which also happened. He's, he's, he was prophesying about having a, a cell phones. Um, so what he is predicting for this time is that um, the Russians will um, take over Europe until the to all the way to the Rhine River when a dignitary or a politician is being killed during a peace conference in the Baltic. OK, 
okay? That's what he's saying. So what are we having today? We have in conflict with Russia, which could lead to the Third World War, which I believe the Third World War will end humankind as we know it, or this human system as we know it with the Armageddon War. I said that, right? That's biblical. And during that time, we don't hear anything about Russia when this Armageddon war is happening. So it's very likely that this is going to be the scenario playing out. They are now screaming peace and safety, but there's sudden destruction, and that is Germany, okay, will happen. There's sudden destruction can happen when Russia enters, enters Germany, moves all the way to the Rhine River, and then NATO is, is trying to stop Russia and in the process also destroys Germany. That can happen. That is a very likely scenario. Okay, very likely. So all we have to do right now is we have to keep our eyes open to this next event when a dignitary will be killed and the Russians will in, in spears in, 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 in very fast um, will take over Europe all the way to the Rhine River. So that is it and that fits within this scenario. But let's continue to read what it says here. It says, but you brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. Right? Don't tell me again it's not going to happen or it, it's going to happen all of a sudden for you. Because if it does, you're not a believer. Then you're one of the unbelievers. Because it shouldn't surprise you like a thief. Because you're supposed to be having your eyes open. All right? You're supposed to put things together that's happening. Not just biblical things, but what are happening today that are related to this. You are all children of the light, children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep. But let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. And then I will go down, go down to verse 9. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here is describing the destruction that's coming upon the people, the unbelievers, that are now screaming, peace and safety. Okay? This is on the streets. They are screaming, peace and safety. We want to go back to normality. These are the people that stayed home during this false pee and didn't say anything because they wanted to go back to normality. They took this because they wanted to go back to normality. But now they are on the streets uh, screaming, peace and safety. We want peace and safety. And they don't understand that their sudden destruction will come. They will not escape it. This is what I'm predicting for Germany. Now, what does it say here? For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's going to happen to our brothers and sisters in Germany who will believe in God because he will come before the wrath starts he will come and pick his bride up why because we can read it here 
This is all about the beginning of the day of the Lord, where we have the wrath of God at first, but before the wrath starts, what does he write in chapter 4? It says that Jesus himself will come and pick the bride up. This is all clear for these people that keep denying, keep denying the rapture, keep denying that Jesus will come before the wrath. Because see, then the wrath will start. The Third World War will start. And Russia will be destroyed right there in Germany. Of course, the German people will, de will be destroyed as well. Germany will be toast. So will be Russia. No more bear. No more bear. No more Soviet or Russia left military. Why? Because I have been saying it in my last video as well. Please go to Be Chewed and watch that video. Okay? I said it there. Because at the end, during the war or the Battle of Armageddon, which is the end of the Third World War, no Russia is there. Nobody's coming from the north. We only have the kings of the east coming. And then the, 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 the beast out of the uh, uh, sea will be there and the beast out of the earth or the false prophet. Read that in Revelation 16. Those are the only ones that are there. None, any nobody from the, 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 the north will come. It's not the Armageddon or the, the Gog and Magog War, which I have been talking about in my past, what, how many videos? I don't know, three? Did I do three videos now about, about the, the war and maybe the beginning of World War Three? Yes, we're having only NATO. You know what NATO is, right? People seem to be very confused about NATO, and I'm going to say it in this video. NATO is the beast out of the earth and the beast out of the sea. Okay? Or let's start with the beast out of the sea first and the beast out of the earth. You can find that in Revelation 13. Read that again. If you're not familiar with Revelation 13, read it. That is the NATO. Okay, that's NATO. Now, I know people don't want to say that. They don't want to take responsibility saying, oh, NATO is the U.S. Yes, NATO has the, NATO is a military organization. Okay, order, whatever you want to call it. Look it up. NATO. What does it say on Wikipedia? What NATO is? It's a military organization. That's what it is. And I think North Atlantic or something, military, whatever. Okay? So it's a military organization. Who has the biggest military in that organization? The United States. Where do the rest of the military come from? from Europe. So the beast out of the earth, which is Europe, people, there is no other empire or world organization or world political system, okay, that has had world empire. Europe was it, and they took turns who was going to have world empire. The last one was um, England and they went down during the First and Second World War. Who did they give power to during that time? The United States. And that's how the United States became an empire. Now, you need to understand that. It says right there that the first beast gave the second beast out of the earth power. Okay? And it's still in existence when the first a beast is there. It didn't, it didn't fall to pieces. It, it didn't go away. That fourth beast of Daniel is still there. That's the beast out of the, uh, the, the sea. That is Europe. Empire, Europe. 
And because the Empire of Europe kind of got a head blow, it was almost destroyed during the First and Second World War, the United States became more powerful and stepped in, and Europe gave them power so they could continue to exist. And so now Europe and the United States together are what? NATO. They're the military power. And they are, and the United States is empire. Empire now, USA. And I know a lot of people don't understand that either. Because who is telling them? They're trying to hide it anyways. But that's the way it is. And they're the only ones that are going to be left over at the end during this Armageddon War. Read it. Chapter 16 of Revelation. It's not hard, but you need to read really everything, people. Okay? And that's why so many people, they just blabber and think they know it because they read a book or something from somebody. No, you need to do extensive studies to understand what's going on. And you also need to understand political backgrounds in order to understand what's going on. And most American, Americans have no political, I mean, no historical background. They have no uh, historical background. They have no idea about the history of Europe. They live like in a bubble. That's just terrible. It is that way, people. They live like they are, they, they, they are like in a bubble. I'm not saying everybody, because I, I listen to a lot of people that have some um, really great uh, historical information and background. And average, the average Americans don't. Well, neither do the average people anyways. But if we want to understand uh, prophecy, we have to understand it. See, people don't understand that um, uh, a revelation has been happening for 1,700 years. They don't understand it. They don't understand that these uh, horsemen have been riding. How do they know? They only see what's happening today. They don't even know U.S. history. And that's pretty, pretty sad. So now they want to understand what's going on in Europe. They want to understand that we're living in the end times. No, they don't. I think it's pretty hard, but this is what we need to understand. We are living right now in the end. Jesus could come this year on the Feast of Trumpets because the stage is set. The stage is set. If you hear anybody being killed in Europe over this conflict, you know for sure, you know for sure that this year the Lord will pick up the bride. I, I really, I mean, I cannot imagine that another year is going to pass before the next thing will happen. Because there is right now one event after another happening. Yeah, and I really think this, this whole thing with screaming peace and safety, yeah, I can recognize that. And it fits very well together. But only if we have all the information. And that information also comes from people like Elmaya. I am not saying I'm following Elmaya. No, I'm not going to say that. Or I'm not accepting everything from him either. He's saying things that I may not accept. Okay, Like, for instance, if he would say the Pope uh, uh, will be ruling at the end again. No, uh-uh, no. He's saying that there will be a golden age after this whole turmoil, which is true. There's going to be the millennium. Yeah, it is true. People will live in harmony. They will not have much. It's not going to be as prosperous. Everybody's going to have to start from scratch again. But they will be happy. Most people will be dead. He's saying, if you find a cow, you can put a golden bell around the cow because it doesn't belong to anybody. So, yeah. 
but I'm coming to an end. I just think it is very interesting what's happening. And unless we keep our eyes open, we will miss the day, especially if we don't have the Holy Spirit. We need to have the Holy Spirit. You know, I have talked about these 10 virgins and the five that are not making it, that the door will close in their face and they will have to go through the wrath of God. And there's nothing I can do. I can only, you know, make these videos one after another, trying to reach people. So that's the only thing I can do. And again, remember, go to my Bichu channel because I put some videos there that I feel I cannot put here on this, uh, on, on YouTube. So please go there. And um, that's just the way it is. Um, anyways, let the Holy Spirit guide you always.